In this video, you'll learn how to build a web server with a ESP32 that controls the shaft position of a servo motor using a slider. First, we'll take a quick look on how to control a servo with a ESP32, and then we'll build a web server to control it remotely. Servo motors have three wires, power, ground and signal. The power is usually red, the ground is black or brown, and the signal wire is frequently yellow, orange or white. When using a small servo like this one, you can power it directly from the ESP32. But if you're using more than one servo or other types, you'll probably need to power up your servos using an external power supply. If you're using a similar servo, connect the ground pin to the ESP32 ground pin, the power to the ESP32 VIN pin, and the signal should be connected to a PWM pin. In our examples, we'll connect the signal wire to GPIO 13, so you can follow this schematic diagram to wire your servo motor. The servo's shaft can be positioned in various angles, from 0 to 180 degrees. Servos are controlled using a pulse with modulation signal. This means that the PWM signal sent to the motor will determine the shaft's position. To control the motor, you can simply use the PWM capabilities of the ESP32 by sending a 50Hz signal with the appropriate pulse width. Or you can use a library to make your life much simpler. We'll use the ESP32 Arduino Servo library. This library uses the same interface as the Arduino Servo library. So if you've controlled a servo motor with an Arduino before, this is not new for you. Download the ESP32 Arduino Servo library, unzip the file, rename the folder by removing all the dashes, and then move the folder to your Arduino IDE installation libraries folder. After installing the library, go to your Arduino IDE. Make sure you have the ESP32 board selected, and then go to File, Examples, Servo ESP32, and open the simple servo sketch. This sketch rotates the servo 180 degrees to one side and 180 degrees to the other. Let's see how it works. First, you need to include the servo library. Then, you need to assign a PWM signal to your servo motor. For our tests, we'll be using GPIO 13, so change this variable from 4 to 13. Next, you need to create a servo object. In this case, it's called Servo1. In the setup, you initialize the serial communication for debugging purposes and attach the GPI we've defined earlier to the servo object. In the loop, we change the motor's shaft position from 0 to 180 degrees and then from 180 degrees to 0. To set the shaft to a particular position, you just need to use the dot .write method in the servo object. You pass as an argument an int number with a position in degrees. Upload the code to your ESP32. After uploading the code, you should see the motor's shaft rotating to one side and then to the other. Now that you know how to control a servo with a ESP32, let's create the web server to control it. The server we'll build contains a slider from 0 to 180 that you can adjust to control the servo shaft position. The current slider value is automatically updated in the web page, as well as the shaft position without the need to refresh the web page. For this, we use Ajax to send an HTTP request to the ESP32 on the background. Let's start by taking a look at the HTML text the ESP32 needs to send to your browser. The HTML page for this project involves creating a slider. To create a slider in HTML, you use the input tag. The input tag specifies a field where the user can enter data. There are a wide variety of input types. To define a slider, use the type attribute with a range value. In a slider, you also need to define the minimum and the maximum range using the min and max attributes. You also need to define other attributes like the class to style the slider, the ID to update the current position displayed on the web page, and finally the onChange attribute 
to call the servo function to send an HTTP request to the ESP32 when the slider moves. Next, add some JavaScript code to your HTML file using the script tags. This part of the code updates the web page with the current slider position. And these lines make an HTTP request on the ESP IP address in this specific URL path. For example, when the slider is at zero, you make an HTTP request on this URL. And when the slider is at 180 degrees, you'll have something like this. This way, when the ESP32 receives the GET request, it can retrieve the value parameter in the URL and move the servo motor to the right position. Now, we need to include this HTML text in the sketch and rotate the servo accordingly. This code does precisely that. Copy it to your Arduino IDE, but don't upload it yet. First, we'll take a quick look on how it works. We've covered how to build a web server in great detail in previous videos, so we'll just take a look at the parts that are relevant for this example. We start by including the servo library and create a servo object called myServo. We also create a variable to hold the GPIO number the servo is connect to, in this case GPIO13. Don't forget that you need to modify these two lines to include your network credentials. Then create a couple of variables that will be used to extract the slider position from the HTTP GET request. In the setup, you need to attach the servo to GPIO13 with a myservo.attach. In this part of the loop, you need to create the web server and send the HTML text to display the web page. Then, this part of the code retrieves the slider value from the HTTP request. When you move the slider, you make an HTTP request on this URL that contains the slider position between the equal and percent signs. We save the slider position value in the value string variable. Then we set the servo to that specific position using the myservo.write with the value string variable as an argument. The value string variable is a string, so use the toInt method to convert it to an int. Now you can upload the code to your ESP32. Make sure you have the right board and COM port selected. After uploading the code, open the serial monitor at a baud rate of 115200, press the ESP32 enable button to restart the board and copy the ESP IP address. Open your browser, pass the ESP IP address and you should see this web page. Move the slider to control the servo motor. In the serial monitor you can also see the HTTP request you're sending to the ESP32 when you move the slider. Experiment with your web server for a while to see if it's working. As you can see, it works as expected. In summary, in this video you've learned how to control a servo motor with a ESP32 and how to create a web server with a slider to control its position. This is just an example on how to control a servo motor. Instead of a slider, you can use a text input field, several buttons with predefined angles, or any other suitable input fields.